that could have been your reaction after reading the title of this video. But some of you might have heard or read something about this, and I had people asking this question. But how is it possible that black holes can have density of water or even air if sometimes people say that black holes are, quote, the densest objects in the universe? Firstly, I have to say that this refers only to supermassive black holes. Secondly, in case of black holes, we basically can't apply the word density in the same sense, but still, people say that uh, from time to time. For instance, I found this Forbes article, which explains several black hole misconceptions, one of which is this. Black holes have very high density. They say that this is true only for stellar black holes, and bring several examples of black holes with low density, kind of. They also say that, quote, black holes don't really have a radius in the usual sense and thus no well-defined volume or density, unquote, but they don't expand on that. Probably that is why some people still might have some questions remaining. So let's try to figure out whether it's actually a misconception or not and why. So where does this idea come from? Density is how much mass there is in a certain volume. To calculate density, let's say, of this ball, we need to know its mass and divide it by volume. When they talk about black hole density, they apply exactly the same logic. They take mass of a black hole, which we sometimes can actually measure, and divide it by volume. And the volume is a volume of a sphere, which is not necessarily a perfect sphere, but that's not the point now. So the sphere which has a Schwarzschild radius. In other words, the sphere defined by the event horizon. That's what we usually see on images like this one. Radius depends on mass. Let's try to calculate some black hole densities and see what we get. At first, let's take a stellar mass black hole, one of the most famous ones. A black hole in Cygnus X1 system, the first stellar black hole candidate. Today we're not gonna focus on how black hole's mass is actually measured, I talked about it in this video. The main thing is that it's possible, although with some limitations. According to recent calculations, the mass of Cygnus X1 black hole is about 14.8 solar masses. Knowing the mass, we can figure out the Schwarzschild radius using this formula. Or you can use this website for convenience, especially if you don't know the formulas. And also you can learn them afterwards here. The system will try to interpret your request. Let's type in Schwarzschild radius of 14.8 solar masses black hole. We can see that the system understood our request. Here we can see event horizon radius, masses written here, and the formula, and the list of variables. And most importantly, the result, 43,700 meters. By the way, if we just type in 14.8 solar masses black hole, it will tell us all of the basic parameters, including event horizon radius. Knowing the radius using this formula, we can calculate the volume. Or we can still use Wolfram we get 349,569 cubic kilometers. But we need that in meters. And let's convert mass into kilograms, and we get this much. Now we divide mass by volume, and we have the density. How much is that denser than water? Its density changes depending on temperature and other factors. For convenience sake, we'll use 1,000 kilogram per cubic meter. It turns out that 14.8 solar masses black hole is 84 trillion times denser than water. Well, that's dense. But if we do the calculations for the supermassive black hole, Sagittarius A star in the center of our Milky Way galaxy, which has a mass of about 4 million suns, we get only a little more than a million kilogram per cubic meter. And that's already not trillions times more, but just 1,000 times denser than water. In case of a black hole in the center of M87 galaxy, which has a mass of 6.5 billion suns, or about 1.3 times 10 to the 40th kilogram, it's 1, then 3, and followed by 39 zeros. With this volume, density equals 0.4 kilogram per cubic meter. And that's 2,295 times less dense than water, or even three times less dense than air at the sea level at the temperature of 15 degrees Celsius. And recently, scientists discovered a 40 billion solar masses black hole. 
That I'm not even going to calculate. You can do it yourself if you want to. Now we can see that if mass and volume increases, density decreases. And now it's clear why some people might think that. But obviously that logic has a problem. Density of this ball is more or less the same everywhere. But talking about an astrophysical object such as the Sun, it's not uniform. Average density of the Sun is not that impressive, being only 1400 kg per cubic meter, which is only 1.4 times denser than water. At the visible surface, it's 10,000 times less dense than air. But in the center of the core, 150 times density of water or 8 times density of gold. The deeper, the higher the pressure and density. But of course, in case of black holes, all of that means nothing. Talking about the density of this or the sun, we deal with regular physical objects of certain mass and specific volume. But we can't apply the same thinking to the black holes. In the article I mentioned, or even in our calculations, we treated the volume enclosed in the event horizon as a regular physical object with a clear surface and mass distributed under the surface. And as far as we know, that's not how black holes work. What is the event horizon? To put it simply, it's just a boundary which even light can't escape. It's not a physical surface, it's a region in space-time. Behind this horizon is just more space-time. So where is all the mass? Here I have to say that we don't really know what's going on inside the event horizon. And we will probably never be able to test it with observations. But at least we have models and calculations. Sometimes it is said that all of the mass of a black hole is in its center, in the singularity, a point of infinite density. And anything that falls into a black hole rushes towards the singularity and then becomes the part of black hole's mass. In case of a non-rotating black hole, singularity is a single point. In rotating black holes, it could have a ring-like shape. And infinite density creates a problem for classical theories. But there are some attempts to figure it out without singularities. Today we're not gonna talk in detail about black hole structure, information problem, but I think I'll get back to that in future videos. Even if we can't be sure about what is behind the event horizon, what we do know is that it's incorrect to deal with black hole's density the same way as with density of regular objects. That's why those statements are misleading. What is interesting is the fact that if we could somehow get to the supermassive black hole, we could even cross the event horizon. We wouldn't be torn apart before that, as we would be in case of stellar mass black holes, because far away from the center, tidal forces are not nearly as strong. And we might not even notice the moment of crossing the event horizon, but that is a completely different story. Links to all of the sources are down below in the description. If you enjoyed this video, leave a like, comment and subscribe. Bye!